Now we all love chicken and that's why on Jay's cookbook this time I'm going to show you chicken steak. Welcome all of you. Um, this time, like I told you, I'm ready to show you a very different sort of uh, Italian dish. It's a steak, it's a chicken steak, uh, but um, it's very crisp on the outside and inside it's very soft and um, moist. Um, well, it's very easy to make, totally easy. The only time, time or the time consuming part is uh, the actual marination. Um, well, if you avoid that, um, or well, if you avoid that, you won't get the softness or the moist, succulent um, chicken uh, meat. Um, otherwise, well, everything else is very, very easy. So I'm going to show you uh, uh, Italian, the way the Italians make. Th they call it uh, the uh, chicken cutlets, uh, but um, it's not, we, we can term it as chicken steak. Now it's made of uh, chicken breast and uh, a very, uh, I think it would be a very good picnic food too. Once it's cold, you can actually um, mix it with a salad put it in a sandwich, I mean, you know, put it in two, put it in between two pieces of bread and a sandwich is formed. It's totally a very versatile type of recipe. So let's see how it's done. That's totally simple. Let's see. Now what we have, obviously what we need for this is uh, chicken breasts. Uh, chicken uh, breasts in the sense it should be skinless and obviously deboned, no bones at all. Um, we are going to actually uh, bash uh, the chicken um, breast in question, which I'm going to show you right now. Okay, so let me just take it out. Yes, now I put it in a zip um, zip pouch, or well, you can put it in um, any sort of um, plastic or you know a pouch. Uh, which is um, clean and good. Uh, what I need to do is uh, bash this. Uh, this. These are thick uh, chicken breasts. What I need is thin. So how do we do this? Now you can um, actually uh, put it in between two sheets of cling film and then bash it with a rolling pin or a, in, in any sort of uh, basher. Uh, here, uh, I'm, I'm, I have actually put it in a big uh, zip lock, lock pouch or a, or a plastic pouch where I'm going to marinate uh, the chicken breast in this too. So let me take my um, basher or my rolling pin. Now my rolling pin does a whole lot of jobs. It bashes things and also uh, it's very good to make uh, pastries and chapatis and st sort of stuff. Now what I'm going to do is, um, carefully, I'm going to make these uh, chicken breasts flattened out. Now as you see, these chicken breasts are kind of thick. What we have to do is, we have to thin it down by bashing it up. So I'm going to just bash this, okay? And this has to become like sort of thin. So it's easier to cook and it's uh, better for the marinade to actually um, seep into the chicken breast. Now it's okay if the underside and everything just, you know, um, spreads a bit, uh, there's no problem. Just don't bash it too much. Okay, okay, now the next one. We can do the same procedure, like I said, uh, in between um, two sheets of cling film. So when you actually bash it, it will um, uh, double in size. It's supposed to double in size. It depends upon the size of the breast too, chicken breast. And it's very, very stress relieving, okay? So that is done. Now let's do this one. Make sure you don't bash your fingers. Okay, so uh, that's done. These 
steaks, chicken steaks are perfect, okay? So this chicken, the poor chicken breast, <laughs> uh, they have been bashed up um, even after they're dead. I'm not sparing them, aren't I? <laughs> anyway, uh, what we have to do is we have to marinate and we're going to make a marinade. This is buttermilk or uh, well, you can um, liquid, you could make with liquid curd. What you need is um, around, well, 150 to 200 ml, okay, of uh, buttermilk or, you know, you can use um, yogurt which has been diluted. Now, in this, what we have to do is we have to mix or we have to make the marinade, okay? Two garlic cloves. Now, this is not very mandatory, but uh, I, I like to put or add garlic in mine. Now, what uh, we have to do is we have to marinate this for at least one day, one full day, okay? That is when in the refrigerator, not in the um, uh, freezer, in the refrigerator, or in the uh, bottom section, do not uh, freeze it. It has to soak up all the buttermilk um, and um, all the other rest of the ingredients and become really moist and succulent. That is when the taste comes. But here, we don't have time for that. Okay, so I'm going to marinate this for 30 minutes at room temperature, okay, at room temperature. Otherwise, you can keep it overnight, 12 hours, or, um, well, one full day, doesn't matter. So two garlic cloves. If you don't like uh, garlic clove or garlic for any reason, I don't know why you wouldn't like it, but um, you can avoid it if you want. Now, another thing what you need is, um, celery, okay, okay, and you can add it to the marinade, lovely color. We need a little bit of uh, chili powder, now it can, they use paprika, um, you can use chili powder or pepper, I want to use or I prefer to use um, a little bit of chili powder. It all depends upon how much you really want. So this will turn into a sort of uh, pink uh, marinade. Okay. Now uh, we need some uh, Worcester sauce or well W sauce, and uh, well, around for this probably around one tablespoon. It depends upon how much you want. Okay. This uh, Worcester sauce is actually of Indian origin. It uh, came from India. The, it's originated in India, the flavor of Worcester sauce. Then we need some salt. Obviously, we don't need pepper because uh, we've added the chili powder. Add uh, according to your taste because this has to, well, mm, flavor the chicken breast. Now, chicken breasts do not have much of flavor. Uh, you need to add whatever flavor you add uh, is going to actually um, seep it up. Now make sure your buttermilk is sour, okay? It has to be sour. If it's not sour, you can add a bit of uh, lime juice or uh, vinegar because it has to be sour. It has to, to tenderize the meat, it has to be sour. Now, what we do is, in this, I'm just going to pour it into this and it's going to marinate in this. Now, this avoids a lot of mess. I mean, you don't have to clean up, okay? Um, once it's marinated and you're going to, and then you want to actually start crumbing it and uh, frying it, you can just throw this off. Don't reuse it because raw chicken is not healthy or it's not, um, well, it's not clean. Okay, now, this has to marinate in this beautiful um, pinkish coral mixture, okay? It has to marinate. Now, like I said, 
The best thing is uh, it has to marinate well one day or overnight. Okay, so if you're actually doing it today, you would have had to um, marinate it yesterday. Okay, so 12 hours before overnight. Um, otherwise, what I'm going to do here, because I don't have obviously 12 hours to spend out here, I'm going to keep this uh, for 30 minutes at room temperature. And when you marinate it for 12 hours or for one day, do it in the refrigerator, that's the uh, bottom part. Do not freeze it, okay? So if, if you freeze it, the solids up and it uh, just cannot absorb all the goodness and the marinade. So we'll keep this aside and uh, let this marinate for 30 minutes. Meanwhile, I'm going to make the actual salad um, to go along uh, with the Italian chicken steak. Very, very simple, all we need lettuce leaves. Now, you can add any leaves. You can add lettuce leaves or spinach leaves, uh, rocket leaves, any type of leaves. I've got uh, iceberg le lettuce uh, in my fridge. Um, you can add uh, romaine lettuce leaves, no problem. Um, I need a salad bowl. And um, all we need to do is just make these beautiful salad leaves. So any salad leaves is good. This, this is really nice and fresh. Beautiful. Make sure you wash it well. The crunch of it under my knife. Oh, it gives me a special feeling. Okay, beautiful. Um, in fact, I'm going to add the whole thing. You can actually, you know, um, tear it with your fingers, no problem. Um, we're going to add a bit of spring onion. Okay, spring onion, mm, beautiful. Uh, two tomatoes, which has been really washed well. So all these tomatoes have all sorts of pesticides and things like that. So wash it really well in, um, in vinegar and water or salt and water. Tomatoes are very, very good for you, very healthy, full of vitamin C. And lycopene. Lycopene is totally um, essential antioxidants, or antioxidant for you. Okay. Um, we need, well, two tablespoons of lime. Okay, a fresh squeeze of lime. And then, um, it's just the dressing. It's a very, very simple salad, what I'm going to do. Um, I'm just going to add a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, extra virgin olive oil again, two tablespoons, mm, lovely. Okay, um, salt and pepper, you're done. You've got uh, your wonderful salad. Okay, um, salt and pepper, according to your desire. Okay, mm, lovely. And a wee bit of salt. Now, those of you who do not want salt, avoid this step. I usually don't uh, put or add salt in my salads. I just add the extra virgin olive oil and the pepper. And um, the lime is more than enough. It gives you enough flavor. Besides, um, I'm, I think that you shouldn't, you know, paralyze your tongue with all kind of strong flavors. So it's better to keep it as simple as possible. So let me just toss this lovely salad together, which goes with our mm, chicken steak, Italian chicken steak, yum. Mm. Okay, and that's the end of that. Then we are ready to actually uh, make the chicken steak now. Now, um, once it's marinated, okay, at least for 30 minutes, 
here it's uh, marinated for 30 minutes. Otherwise, like I said, it's uh, very good if you can marinate it overnight, that is 12 hours, or if you can do it for 24 hours, one full day, in the refrigerator, not in the freezer. Uh, if you do that, um, the meat or the chicken breast becomes more moist and succulent and very flavorful. Uh, the more you marinate, so this actual recipe, uh, what we do, the procedure is actually very, uh, it's very easy and it doesn't take much time, but the marination, uh, take, uh, marination time um, is a bit or, or quite long. So we have to compromise somewhere in cook, cooking. Anyway, uh, here uh, 30 minutes is up. Uh, I would have, if, it, if it's according to me, I would have preferred it uh, to have uh, marinate for some more time, at least for six hours. Now, um, because it's at room temperature, um, it's okay. Now, what I have to do is I have to make a breading station like I usually do. Now, usually what they do is for cutlets, um, we have to uh, roll it in, well, we have to roll it in um, egg and then breadcrumbs. Here, there's no such thing. Don't you, you don't have to use uh, eggs or anything. Uh, very well. So now, let's um, do the breading station, which is very, very simple. I'll need a piece of butter paper to make things easier. That's all. Okay. Any uh, grease-proof paper or butter paper is enough. Any clean paper so that you can use this as a breading station. So like I said, usually uh, for cutlets and everything, you coat it in egg and then um, you coat it in, um, well, breadcrumbs or whatever you use to coat it. Uh, here, I need some breadcrumbs. I have actually some breadcrumbs out here, fresh uh, whole wheat breadcrumbs and you can use, um, well you can use you know normal uh, bread but here I've used um, whole wheat and uh, I've crumbed it okay so it's always, uh, you do get crumbs um, in the supermarket, ready-made crumbs. I um, well, recommend you not to use that Try to always um, make your own breadcrumbs. It's much tastier and it has more substance. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Now, you can notice it's got a yellowish color. It's because it's whole wheat. Now, if it was normal bread, it would have been white. Um, well, I like it uh, whole wheat. You can, prefer, you can make it white or whatever you want. Now, uh, to this, you can add, um, well, sal salt or pepper, or whatever you want. I'm going to add a little bit of thyme, okay? <clears throat> okay, a bit of thyme. Just a bit. You can add uh, thyme or parsley. And, well, you can add a bit of garlic powder too. It's not necessary, but you you know it adds to the taste. Okay. Now, while that's going on, what we have to do is for well frying. Yeah. So let's heat our oil. So this will be ready. Just a bit of oil to fry these cutlets. Any flavorless oil like canola oil or sunflower oil, anything is enough. And then um, what we do is our chicken breast, which has been marinating. Now uh, we've got our chicken breast, which has been marinated. What we do is take it out of the buttermilk mixture, okay, and just press it on uh, the bread crumb mixture. That's it. You don't need anything else, okay. Make sure, now the buttermilk 
helps um, the breadcrumbs to stick to the chicken breast. Make sure um, that all the whole um, chicken breast is coated well with the actual breadcrumb mixture. I like to, uh, you know, put all these breadcrumbs on top of the actual cutlet so that it gets fully covered, like, like I'm playing in the sand and I'm hiding this. Now coat this very well, like I said. Um, let the whole chicken be completely submerged in uh, the breadcrumbs so that a thick coating coats the chicken. And then what we do is just um, lower it onto the hot oil. Make sure it's not very hot, otherwise uh, what happens is it will burn on the outside and inside it won't get cooked. Slowly we lower this and uh, well, uh, a chicken breast of this size will actually take three minutes on each side to cook well. Make sure the oil is not, it's like medium high. It shouldn't be very high because if, it, uh, if it's very high, what happens is it will um, actually burn on the outside and inside it won't get cooked. Well, crispy things have a really wonderful taste, especially when uh, the outside is uh, wonderfully crispy and the inside is very soft and succulent. So my delicious Italian steaks are done. Chicken steaks are done. Okay, and they've been transferred, golden fried. Um, and um, yes to be served with a very, very apt salad. Lovely. My Italian chicken cutlets or steaks and my green salad, both are ready. Both a wonderful combination. You'll love it because it's really tasty. You will definitely, definitely dig it.